Hey everybody, so part two to my video. Disclaimer, this is not to belittle anybody. This is not to downgrade anything, downplay anyone. This is not even to downplay the relationships I had. This is about me and my experience, my opinions, and, and mine's only. If you don't like anything I'm saying, you don't have to watch this. Keep scrolling. I'm sure there's someone else better that comes along you can um, watch. But this is me speaking from my experience, my point of view, and giving my opinions after the experiences I've been through. And can nobody fault me or tell me how to feel or tell me if it's right or wrong? Because this is not you living it. This is me living it. I hope y'all can understand that. So now let's continue on with this video. So speaking, speaking from my perspective, I think that it's very easy to bump heads with somebody that don't understand you, that don't understand anything about you. And I always say this to everybody that I meet, to love me and to like me is to understand me and understand everything about me. That means it takes time to get to know me. That means you have to put in the energy and the work on talking to me, put in the action and the energy into hanging out with me, having conversations with me. You're going to learn the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, and et cetera, everything. That's what makes me me. And after that, then I hope you like me. I hope your experience is, is good and everything. But a lot of people tend to assume a lot of shit about me. So when you misunderstand everything about me, it creates a lot of drama and it creates anger within you. And I say this to everybody, if you don't fully understand a person, you don't know a person very well, it's easy to confuse them with a lot of people you deal with in the past. It's easy to get angry with that person because you don't know anything about them. You can't read minds. You're not a psychic. So you have to get to know that person. You have to talk to that person and then use your discernment on that person and decide whether or not you still want to deal with them at the end of the day, right? I know I'm right. Let's move on. So like I said, I wanted to display my strength and this is the strength of me. Okay. Strength of a woman. That is the best quote you could ever hear. Thanks to Mary J. Blige. Because I've been through a lot of hell. Like I said, I've been through so much. My life has not been the easiest, nor has it been the most entertaining. It's been very challenging, stressful. I had a lot of good times, a lot of bad times, confusing times, and really, really horrible, unimaginable times that you would never see a woman like me go through. And because it's the type of people I dealt with. So, as everyone constantly says, when we step out to the world, we step out in this world, we don't know what's going to happen to us. We don't know what we're going to bump into. We don't know who we're going to meet and what kind of challenges are going to be coming our way. But we will be prepared for it, you know, especially when the time comes. So, with that being said, I wanted to let you know that everything that I've been through, I was prepared for some of it because of the type of person that I see that's being displayed in front of me. And sometimes it catches me off guard. So of course me and some people will bump heads because there's no clear communication. There's no clarification. So things is kind of uncomfortable, you know, in certain situations. And I say this because I spent every day, I spent my days hoping to have a really good day, hoping to have the best experience when meeting peoples. Because I tend to meet peoples, brand new peoples every week. Every week, I meet up to three new peoples. And some of them are on point. You know, some of them I do have a lot of common with. Some of them I do think is challenging. 
and some of them I have great conversations with, even though I know nothing's going to happen after that. Like, we're not going to go anywhere with this situation. Like, there's people I click with. And I always immediately want to come become friends with that person because of the vibe they give me, the energy they put out. And then on top of that, they compliment me in a lot of ways. So I was like, why not give this person a chance and be associates or friends with the person? And nine times out of ten, I do become cool with that person. And the relationship goes wild. Like, we could talk for hours every day. And friendships will go from being uncomfortable and weird to be exciting, to be fun, and to get to know this person more and more. It's very exciting. So, with that being said, I had created a lot of cool associates and friendships with people that I met on social media that compliments me that like when I say compliments me I'm talking about compliments my style like we both are similar in some things we both understand each other and we both do agree with each other on a lot of things and it makes us unique and beautiful so I'm planning on sticking around with them for a long time and I wanted to be transparent with y'all because there's a lot of people who misunderstand me and misjudge me. And I'm kind of disappointed about that rather than shock because this has been going on now for six years. And I'm not understanding why is it so hard for people to really talk to me and get to know me rather than pass judgment and assume whatever they want to assume about thinking they're right about it. And if I had to die for every time somebody misjudge everything about me and make up their scenarios in their heads about me, I would be filthy rich. Seriously, as rich as Bill Gates, because this goes on for months. Every time I meet someone, and it's specifically men, on an associate level, social level, this has nothing to do with dating. This is more of a social level because... People don't take the time out to socialize with me as much as they need to. You cannot under you cannot understand a person and get to know a person within 24 hours. You would never know everything about a person within 24 hours. It takes time. So you will have to be in communication with me constantly. You know, whenever we find a time, we could get together and talk and hang out and enjoy each other's company. That's the only way you're going to get to know me. And I tell this to everybody all the time, and I wish people take the time out of their day because if you could take out the time out of your day to go on social media and post up cute pictures and videos and socialize with others and share stuff with people, you could socialize with me. And that way you will understand who I am. That way you could learn how to understand, like talk to me and love me and understand me the way I need to be understood. I am often misunderstood by a lot of people's because people choose to make their mind up about me. And nine times out of ten, they're always wrong. You're wrong on so many levels. You have one or two conversations with me, and you're already thinking you know me. And you don't. I could sit here and lie to your face for all you know. And you would think that is the truth. And that's what's funny about people's. You could sit here and say, I am fine. I'm living the life and everything, blah, blah, blah. And all the while, I could be at home, you know, depressed, miserable, and, you know, thinking about a lot of negative stuff and not having a great day. Or I could be sitting at home crying day and night. And you would never know because I put it on the great front. I put it on the face. And sometimes I really do be okay because at the end of the day, some things is out of my control. And some things I just can't understand. So it takes time for me to learn you know some things so I can understand better and I do talk to God a lot I do pray to God a lot so that also helps me understand some situations out here because some people's I really clearly don't understand some people's that that leaves me in the dark create a lot of sense of like hurt and betrayal like it angers me because 
you choose not to let me understand anything about you or you choose to leave me in the dark. That's very unfair. And I wouldn't do that to nobody. I don't want nobody doing that to me. So what makes me overcome a lot of obstacles and gain some strength emotional wise and mental wise to keep going because every day I tell myself that you'll be okay you're gonna keep going we're gonna keep going we're gonna keep living our lives and keep having great experiences is by praying and meditating a lot but I do more praying than anything else and then listen to the never guarded on um, videos and listen to these manifestation videos and stuff it kind of helped me through everything I would sit up at night to two or three in the morning every single day, listen to Neville Goddard's videos and listen to meditation videos and saying my words of affirmation. And these words of affirmation, I say three times a day, sometimes four or five, because it really does help. Whether or not y'all understand it, affirmations do help you feel a little better because if you feel shitty, you feel like you can't move on or you feel like you can't really get things done because your head is too crowded with a lot of negative feelings or a lot of hurt feelings and hurt thoughts and you can't seem to get out of it. Bring yourself back down to the normal level and listen to a meditation video. Listen to music. It does help. And I'm talking about positive music, not, you know, a lot of rap shit, a lot of, you know, negative stuff out here, stuff that's not positive. I'm talking about real meditation videos because it does help you clear your mind. It does help you think in a positive way and writing things down. I write everything in my phone. Like I type everything in my laptop. I do that two or three times a day. If I have a thought in my head, I would just put it on video or put it in my phone like as far as typing goes and it does help me out a lot so if anybody is curious about how do I get my day started and how do I make it through the day even though I am you know suffering from PTSD I'm suffering from anxiety and panic attacks and depression and I was diagnosed with severe depression back in 2016 I went when I say I went through hell I went through hell I went through a lot Okay, I don't think half of the women out here will even make it through what I just went through. They will probably lose their shit. They will lose their mind all the way because people ask me, how do you still, you know, keep moving? How are you still standing tall and able to face the world and go on social media like everything is fine? It's because I talk to God a lot and I ask for clarity. I ask for answers. I question God about a lot of stuff and ask him through a dream or a vision to give me my answers. So back in 2016, oh God, I just, I feel around. I'm going to try to say this without crying. This is, this is really very hurtful. If y'all don't really realize or understand, I try to unalive myself and my brother was living with me at the time, so he witnessed a lot. I had two kids at the time. They were, um, One of them was in school. The other one was at home because she was just a toddler. She was two years old. And I was going through a death in the family. So my grandmother passed away. My stepfather passed away. My uncle passed away. And I didn't know how to... I didn't know how to talk to anybody about what I was feeling and I felt like I wanted to just mourn the loss of my family members with the rest of my family that's still alive but I didn't know how to talk to them about it and I was so badly looking forward to talking to my aunt about it like I how I felt but I wanted to know how she felt but for some reason I couldn't bring myself to even say anything to anybody so I kind of went to Facebook and tried to talk to people about it, ask people questions like, how do y'all go through the um, death of, in your family? How go? It's like when you have more than one deaths in your families, how do you make it through your days? How do you solve, like, solve your issues? How do you 
mourn? How do you get through it? Because it was hard for me to get through it. And I didn't know how to talk to anybody about it. Like, what words can you possibly say to anybody? So I stayed in my room, locked myself up, and I was laying down. I was in my bed for days. I was crying. I barely took the clothes off I had on from the funeral. I didn't know what to do. Couldn't eat. Couldn't watch TV. Couldn't do anything. And I kind of felt really shitty. I swear to God, I was at my lowest point. And I felt like I couldn't even get myself up. I couldn't pick myself up at all. And I couldn't really speak. And my brother was trying to talk to me. He was trying to, you know, get through this with me. Because I was the firstborn and I stuck by her. And I was the, I was the last person to um, live with her. I was living with her. I saw more stuff, you know, that was going on with my grandmother. And just when I started seeing good results coming from her, from being sick, bad stuff started happening to her. And then spiritually, emotionally, and mentally, you could tell that she was struggling, that she was ready to go home. And she was saying that over and over, that she was ready to go home. And I looked over to her home health day and I shook my head and I was like, I don't even know what to say. She said, that's all right. Your grandmother is going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Just pray for her. Stay strong for her. She look at you every day and she's making sure that you're not affected by this, that you're okay. You're gonna... And I was like, okay, I have to be strong for her. And I have to be strong for the rest of the family, including my kids. My kids is going to see this. And I look at my kids every single day, even after the death of my grandmother. And I tell my kids, we're going to make it. Everything's going to be fine. You are beautiful and amazing. And we're going to be very close and we're going to learn how to show each other as much love and gratitude and respect as much as possible to the day we die. Because tomorrow is not promised to us. So it took some time. And even being in the hospital, talking to doctors and therapists, it took some time. But I got through it. And I wasn't fully over my grandmother being not here on this earth, but I got through it. The hard part was over. And I harmed, I harmed myself plenty of times. I was a cutter. I was a drinker. I was a smoker. And I had to learn how to control it. But even though I knew I had to learn how to control it, I didn't want to. I chose not to control anything, not even my emotions, because I didn't know how to. And I was inexperienced into this level. So I was like, okay, all I could do is pray. And I prayed and I prayed hard every single night. And I cried every time I prayed because I'm like, I'm doing all this praying, but is God really listening to me? I was like, God, if you listen to me, please listen to me clearly. I need you to lift this burden off my chest. I need you to take away this pain. Everything that I witnessed and everything I went through, I want you to just help me, you know, learn a lesson from it and get me through this darkness. I'm, I'm walking down this path and I felt like there was no hope. I felt like this sense of darkness where I'm just walking down this dark tunnel and all I hear is insecurities, you know, bad luck and evil this and evil that. And, you know, I'm not going to be able to make it through this time. And it wasn't until I finally spoke to another person at the hospital that gave me some type of sense of hope that I could make it through this. And they was like, give me one good reason as to why I deserve to live on this earth and why I should stick around long enough to see through this. And the first thought was my kids. My kids was one of the reasons why I made it through this trying time. 
because the look on my son's face when he realized he could not be with me, he couldn't see me. I, my kids was taken away from me because I tried to unalive myself and nobody understood why. Nobody knew what was going on with me. Nobody knew why I didn't want to be here anymore and why I wanted to leave my family behind. So I looked my family dead in the face and said I didn't want to be here because my very best friend, my grandmother, my mom, like my grandmother who was my mom, she left me behind on this earth. And she left me not knowing anything about life, not learning how to, you know, do my finances or learn how to live without her, learn how to, you know, live a normal human life as an adult, go back to school, learn how to invest, learn how to, you know, take care of children as a first time mom. And I didn't know how to um, do anything. I didn't know how to solve anything. So my aunt, just like my mother was telling me that, don't worry, you got your family to have your back. Your family, will, it takes a village to raise a child. That's what my family kept saying. It takes a village to raise a child. So I said, okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> just... It took a while. It took a 